welcome back to a brand new episode of United in Strength. I am Coach Mike here, hard gainer, expert extraordinaire, certified personal trainer, and nutrition coach. And thank you for joining me today as we talk more about nutritional advice, the mechanics of lifting corrective exercise, and more. And before we continue, please remember to subscribe to my channel before you leave. And if you do enjoy what I have to say in this video, please give this video a thumbs up and let's manipulate those algorithms a little bit to make sure that I am exposed to more people that way I can help more people and also give my other videos a shot or a watch before you go as well I hope you find something enjoyable there and educational it was January of this year when upon preparing to <laughs> unintentionally strain my tensor fascia lata with a measly 300 pound deadlift I was feeling as physically uncomfortable as I could be for someone who really needed to hurry up and head home before the start of work that morning I had been experiencing more gastric distress that morning than I ever had in all my years of lifting weights and it might or might not have escalated from there I doubt that it was at all because I ate a hard boiled egg and a small cup of jasmine rice before training so there could have been just one other possible culprit, dextrose powder. And some of you, I know what you might be thinking. Didn't you write an article praising dextrose to the powder to the ninth to the nth power just two years ago? You're right. I did. There's the link. And how timely that I'm writing this article now because I noticed that... Um, that, art, that article and video, that video for Dextrose Powder has suddenly gained quite a bit of traction, gaining close to a thousand views after two years, out of nowhere. And um, I had recommended it for intra and post training supplementation, regardless of the fact that one serving of the brand I alone was using contained 46 grams of sugar. What I didn't think about was the fact that dextrose, a simple sugar, is made from cornstarch, which has a molecular structure that's almost identical to glucose. Corn alone is not an easily digestible food, and anything that's not easily digestible, depending on the person, of course, can lead to gastric distress. Now, looking back, as I wrote the article that is accompanying this video, I imagine now that dextrose powder had to have played a major part in my gaining 20 pounds in the months following the release of the aforementioned article. I was 173 when that article was written and that video was made. And within a few months, I was up to 190 pounds. Some of that was muscle. There's no doubt about that. But the gut I suddenly had could only be from my insulin spiking more than it ever had clearly as a result from the sugar content and the dextrose powder. It didn't help that my body chemistry had changed. I was 35 at that time, and personal stress didn't help either, but that's immaterial. So in January of this year, I purchased cyclic dextrin upon doing some research, and here are some benefits of cyclic dextrin or highly branched cyclic dextrin, dextrin also known as cluster dextrin. Due to its low osmolarity, it's far easier to digest, and because of that, it's going to provide a faster gastric emptying time, which means less bloating. I'll get into that later. It's not just gluten-free, which is great for me because I do have a gluten sensitivity. It's also sugar-free, and that alone diminishes any chance of insulin spikes, which will lead to fat gain, something I didn't take into account. When taken during and after your training, cyclic dextrin enters your muscles at a faster rate than any other carbohydrate powder. This is thanks not just to its low osmolarity, as mentioned earlier, but also to its increased molecular weight. It provides a steadier stream of carbs, therefore, into the muscles, allowing for prolonged training sessions. Now, does this mean go ahead and hang out in the gym for two hours like people did in the 80s? No. And some government studies may validate these claims. An abstract of one crossover double-blind study 
compare the effects of low doses of both cyclic dextrin and maltodextrin during an endurance exercise using rate of proceed of exertion. The abstract stated that in the end that RPE was increased during the exercise and its increase was significantly less than 30 and 60 minutes after ingesting highly branched cyclic dextrin than maltodextrin. For those unfamiliar with what RPE is, it's a rating system where the trainee subjectively rates his or her performance using a number system with one, indicating light activity that no effort was needed at all, and up to 10, indicating that max effort has been applied. So if the study shown here states that while RPE did increase as could have been expected, the increase itself wasn't necessarily significant, then it can be implied that the cyclic dextrin used made training easier to continue with as opposed to with maltodextrin. Now, as for my own personal experience, I can say that it does work for me in both the sense that I don't ever feel overly fatigued after intense training anymore, and that not once have I felt bloated or experienced any stomach problems upon using cyclic dextrin. If you're bloated and are preparing for a relatively heavy set of squats or deadlifts, engaging your core will be more than difficult. Therefore, cyclic dextrin allows me to move through my training in a far more efficient and comfortable manner. These things do matter, trust me. So how should, how and when should I use cyclic dextrin, you're probably asking me. Do not concern yourself with cyclic dextrin or its use if you're just starting out. All you need is water, although you could add a pinch of sea salt in the water for maximum hydration as well as avoiding cramps. Concern yourself as a beginner with just eating right, perfecting your exercise technique, and advancing as much as you can without any supplementation at all. You don't always need it. I don't recommend using, uh, relying so much on supplements. I alone use what? This, pre-workout, protein powder. Um, that's it, really. Three things. Three things I rely on. In terms of its usage, it can be beneficial if you're training on an empty stomach, as I've been doing lately, because of the quick digestion of the carbs. It's obviously also beneficial if you've reached a point in your training where you need a boost to sustain your training for the sake of instant absorption of carbs directly into the muscles. This in particular is made by uh, Muscle Sport. No, they do not sponsor me. I'm not endorsed by them. No. But they recommend one scoop for 16 to 20 ounces, I believe. Let me check. Yep, 16 to 20 ounces. So if you do more than that, you could do two scoops. And one scoop is 28 grams, and that is about 27.5 grams of carbohydrates. So if you have two uh, scoops, that would be about 55 grams of carbs. You can and should take it af during and after your training sessions. Admittedly, it is pricier than we'd all like it to be, but I absolutely find it a worthy investment if used for the right reasons. Uh, far more superior to any other carb powder that's been on the market, and a lot of these carb powders have been on the market for a lot longer than this. Um... Do I, am I, is this to say I am officially anti-dextrose powder? No. If you feel it works for you, by all means, go ahead and try it. But if you're like me and you have gluten sensitivity issues and issues digesting anything that's made from corn products, this is absolutely the way to go. That's my little spiel. Thank you once again for joining me today. I am available 
for one-on-one -on -one training, at one-on-one -on -one personal training at the iconic Strong and Shapely Gym in East Rutherford, New Jersey. I'm also available for at-home personal training, and I'm also available for online coaching via Zoom. Um, drop me a line here or on my website, unitedinstrength.net or at unitedinstrength16 at gmail.com and let's get you in the best shape of your life today. Until next time, take care.